Hallelujah. 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 God is good. Glory to God. He's a good God. How many of you know God's a good God? He does good things for us. Praise God. He's a mighty God, and we're glad that, that we can serve a, a mighty God, a good God. You know, I grew up in a church that didn't know God was good. Didn't know that. We were afraid that God was going to get us. And, um, and so I grew up a boy. You know, I, I grew up a, a active. I was a very um, probably hyperactive. And, and so that, that translates into getting a lot of trouble without, you know, without trying. And uh, so, uh, so anyway, so consequently when uh, I'd, I'd hear the preacher say, well, you know, God is watching you, I would, I would get concerned about that. I really was pleased if he didn't notice me because I figured he wouldn't be happy with what he found. And so I just, I grew up not knowing, I didn't, I didn't, I grew up not knowing that God was a good God. And so that made a big impression upon me when I found out from the Bible that God is good. God is a good God. He has good things for us. And so I don't have to go through life wondering what God's got for me today. I get up every morning. I'm awake. Praise God because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see the good things that God has for us. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Tell your neighbor good things. Good things. Good things. Praise the Lord. And so um, I don't know how many of you know um, uh, you know about my background. I grew up Amish. How many of you know what that is? You don't know what that is? Well, I'll tell you what. Some people refer to, to them as Pennsylvania Dutch. You know, they think most of those grew up out in Pennsylvania. Well, we actually, I actually grew up in Kansas, and there's a, uh, communities in many states now driving horse and buggies, didn't have a car, uh, didn't have any of that, you know. So we drove horse and buggy for our transportation because the church said it was wrong to have a car. So I asked my dad when I was eight or nine years old, I said, Dad, is it wrong to have a car? Well, not necessarily. I said, okay, I said, how come we can't have one? And he said, well, because the church says, says we can't. And uh, I thought to myself, now that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. It's not wrong, but we can't have it. And so anyway, my dad changed the subject pretty quick because he was a little uncomfortable with me asking questions like that, you know. But, you know, uh, we, we, grew up, we grew up that way. And, of course, that meant we didn't have electricity. We didn't have phones. We didn't have any of that. We did have running water. Us boys ran and got it. <laughs> and um, uh, we, we, we had central heat. We had the wood stove in the middle of the house. So that way, you know, it could, you could have whatever temperature you wanted by however close or however far away you sat from the stove. And so, uh, so I, I, I kind of joke about that, how that we made, uh, you know, we did have a few modern conveniences, but it's because, it's because we made it convenient. And, and so, so I grew up, I walked away from the church because I did not think, uh, I did not think that the church had anything to offer me. I never saw one prayer answered in the 20 years that I went to church there. I didn't know God wanted to answer prayer. Uh, I figured he'd find some reason not to answer the prayer. And so we just have to realize, though, we have to realize, though, that God is looking to answer prayer every opportunity he has. He really is. He's not trying to withhold not trying to uh, uh, prolong uh, the agony of people and what they go through. And he's not trying to find out how much you can bear without breaking. He's a good God, and he wants to answer your prayer. Amen? And so I'm, I found that out later. I got into a meeting one day. Somebody put, uh, drug me to a meeting. I felt like I was drugged. Uh, you know, 
and uh, there's 3,000 people there. Some speaker named Kenneth Copeland was there that I'd never heard of. He was a long-winded speaker. I did not like long-winded preachers at that time, and and so I'll do my best this morning not to be too long-winded. You know what you know what it means when a preacher says he's going to make a few brief remarks. It means nothing. It means nothing. Uh, I don't know one preacher. I grew up, and they, they, the preacher would get up and say, well, I'm going to just make a few words this morning. But then he lied because he made a lot. He, 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 he talked a lot. And so anyway, um, so, so I went to this meeting, and, and here um, Brother Copeland spoke. I don't know what he spoke about because I, I, I was just wishing I wasn't there. I mean, I, by that time, I'm out in the world. I'm out in bars and pool halls and things like that. And doing those kinds of things, and 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 so I thought I had better games to play than the church, and uh, um, so we went to this meeting. This guy uh, wanted me to go, and I couldn't figure out how come, how come uh, I couldn't lie my way out of that. I usually could lie my way out of a lot of things, um, and and so we went, um, and uh, so. Uh, he, you know, he preached and preached. He said he was going to quit. He said he was going to close probably four or five times. He finally did, though. You know, and he actually did did close. He said, I'm, uh, and I thought to myself, okay, now we'll have one song and it'll be over. It's been three hours, okay, uh, since this meeting started, and so that wasn't what happened. He didn't have. He didn't start singing. He started ministering by the Holy Spirit uh, to, and and he began to say some things that I didn't understand. But he caught my attention with one thing he said. This is the only thing I remember he said. I don't remember the rest of it. I couldn't under, I didn't understand what he was talking about anyway. And and uh, he said, "There is a man here. You've had a severe sinus condition all your life." And he said, he said, the Lord is healing you right now. And well, I had that all my life. I, I had sniffles. I had respiratory problems. I had all kinds of things all year round. Didn't matter, summer, winter, hot or cold. And, and so uh, we you know, had the operation back in those days. They were big on getting your tonsils out and all of that. I don't know if they still are or not, but... Anyway, um, so I had that done. It didn't make any difference. But but I remember I thought, well, I better check myself. So I thought, I'll take a deep breath. So I took a deep breath, and it didn't feel any different. And I, I remember thinking to myself, just as I thought, not me. And, 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 and I have to tell you, though, that's the last time I ever had it. Last time I ever had it. So what was God trying to do? He's trying to show me that he had something good for me. He's trying to show me he's real. Trying to show me that 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 uh, he's not mad at me. And so we walked away from there and, and didn't know didn't know uh, uh, a lot. Actually, I promised myself I'd never get myself caught in a meeting like that again. That's what I promised myself. And 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 so then the guy said uh, that I was with. He said he said you want to go go get, grab a bite to eat. He said I'll pay for it. And I thought I remember thinking in my carnal thinking, well good, I'll get something out of this. And 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 so I said sure. And so we went to this truck stop and 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 we were just uh, getting ready to eat. And and here comes a couple of my buddies from the bars, come walking in. And they saw me and they said, hey, he said, where you been? Where you been? We didn't see you tonight. And I said, well, I just, I, I mean, I'm, I'm wanting to get this. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't, I, I mean, I had gone to it. We, I was thankful that we'd gone to a different town, you know, on a Saturday night. I mean, church bad enough on Sunday. You know, this is Saturday night. And so I, I said to them, oh, I just decided to do something different, you know. And I just tried to play it, play it cool. Well, Blabbermouth that was with me, he said, boys, 
He said, you should have been there. He said, we went to this meeting and the people got saved. People got healed. People got delivered. People spoke in tongues. Their eyes was about as big as dinner plates. And they started backing up. They looked at me and shook their head like, what you get yourself into? And they started backing up. You know what they did? They backed clear out of the restaurant. They kept looking back at me as they finally got to the door. They left. They didn't even stay for, to get anything to eat. And so I promised myself another thing. I'm not going to hang around blabbermouth either. <laughs> and I did. I hid from him. I'd see him and I'd go around the corner. I'd turn around and go the other direction. I mean, I, was, I didn't even care whether I was rude or not. I just couldn't put, put up with that. I'll tell you, you can't keep his mouth shut then I'm not going to be around him. And so... Uh, but it was in, that was in February, and in May and June, uh, the Lord worked it out where I moved upon me one night in 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 uh, well Monday morning, two o'clock in the morning, and and I'm driving down a road, country road, and all of a sudden, the futility of my life, the way I'd been living, became so real to me that I cried out to God. I didn't know if he was real or not. That I just I didn't know if he cared. I didn't know if he wanted me. I just said, I just I just prayed a simple prayer. Cried out to God. I'm going down a country road. Said, God, I repent of my sin. I didn't even know where where I picked that up. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that's what you're supposed to do. I just thought, well, you know, you just try harder, you know. That's what we was raised, you know. Just try harder. You can do it. You know, the reason you can't do it is because you hadn't tried hard enough. Well, I repented. I just said, I repent. I ask you to forgive me. And I said, uh, I thank you that I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I'm wondering where that came from. And, and I mean, but, it was, but, but I'm, I'm bypassing my head. It seemed like I was in my head, my mind. I'm, I'm listening to myself. Anybody ever been there? And so... So I said, I said, if you'll receive me, I'll serve you the rest of my life. And the presence of God filled that car. Just, oh, I'm telling you. I mean, it's just all over in that car. And I knew I got saved. I knew I had come back to the Lord. I had an experience when I was 10 years old that I didn't know what that was about, but I did experience the Lord then. But I lived... 12 years like the devil after that because I didn't have any teaching and I never told anybody anything about that that experience when I was 10 years old. I didn't know anybody that would appreciate it. People in our church didn't have things like that happen. My goodness, what would they call me if I told anybody? They'd probably think I'm crazy. Here, have a pill, you know. And so, uh, uh, so I didn't tell anybody, didn't have any teaching, didn't know what happened. But at that point when I got... When I, going down the road in that car, the presence of God, I knew I was saved. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt I'd go to heaven when I die. And so I, I broke both promises. I thought to myself, who would be, I need to talk to somebody about this. Who would appreciate this? And I didn't know any, I mean, I'm out of church. I didn't know any preachers really well at all. I mean, tried not to. You know, I just couldn't relate to them. So finally I thought to myself, old Blabbermouth would probably be happy about this. And so I went and told him, and boy, was he happy. And then I broke the next promise, and that we went back to more meetings like that. I found out that God is good. I found out that God's interested in people. I found out that no matter where you're at in life, whatever you're going through, God has something for you. He has a plan for your life. Nobody's an accident. Nobody's an accident with God. I mean, your parents might not have known you're coming, but 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 God knew. <laughs> Isn't that good? Isn't that right? And so anyway, I want you to know uh, just a, this simple message I want to give you today. I just said some things to you today to show you that God can take the least of the least and raise them up. 
He can take those that nobody thinks anything's going to, that they're not going to amount to anything and make something out of them. And so um, I, I, I'm pretty sure that when I went through school, they would have voted me the least likely to succeed. They did not, they didn't think, they didn't, they didn't give me much credit for anything. And so we just, uh, we, no, nobody expected much out of me. Except when it come to work. And then dad said, you better get to work. How many of you ever had your dad tell you that? You better get to work. All right. That's not all bad. Not all bad. Amen. So anyway, turn with me in your Bible to so John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. I'm going to read those verses. We'll talk a little bit about the reality of the Holy Spirit in our lives today. And uh, we need to understand that he is here. Everybody say here. here. He's in me. Isn't that right? And he never leaves. I said he never leaves. Isn't that good? Look what it says. John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. He says, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. And say, so, so here's the thing. Jesus said to the disciples, at the Last Supper, you know, uh, that, that, that he was getting ready to leave. That is not good news when somebody that you have left everything for tells you they're leaving. That is a, not a good moment. Not a good moment at all. They had left family. They had left businesses. Any social, any social status they had is gone. Any religious acceptance they had is gone. They have nothing other than Jesus. Jesus said, I'm going to leave. Bad moment. But he said, now look. He said, I'm going to pray the Father. Now get this. I'm going to pray the Father, and he, he will give you another helper. Another helper. The Holy Spirit. Isn't that right? Yes. And so we need to recognize the value of this statement. Jesus said, I'm leaving, but he said, I'm going to send you another helper. Now, the word another right there, let me just share with you. In our language, it's just another word. We don't think much about it. In the Greek language, there are two principal wor two words that are translated into the English language as another. One is the Greek word heteros, and it means different, okay? The other is the Greek word alos, and it means one of the same kind. This happens to be the latter one, one of the same kind. So if you read it like the Greek would read it, you would say this, that Jesus said, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another of the same kind to be your helper. One like him. One like Jesus. One that will talk like him. One that will do things like he did in the Gospels. If Jesus did miracles, so will this helper. If Jesus said something, so the Holy Spirit, the helper, is going to say the same thing. What would the Holy Spirit do in our life? He will do what Jesus did. Amen. If he has if Jesus walked in victory, then the Holy Spirit will help you walk in victory. Amen. If Jesus healed the sick, the Holy Spirit will heal the sick. Absolutely. If Jesus met the needs of people and fed the 5000, guess what? Your needs not too big for the Holy Spirit too. He can meet every need you have. He knows how to bring you the food you need, the job you need, every every uh, uh, thing that you need in your life. He makes a way for it. He can he can bring it to you. He can bring things to pass that people around you would say, "Well, I don't think anything will ever happen. You're just 
You're just going to have to settle for whatever. No, my friend, if you'll believe that the Holy Spirit will minister to you the same way Jesus did to people back in, in Bible days, let me tell you something. You can have more than what the people around you say you can have. It's absolutely true. I'm telling you the truth. They, uh, you know, uh, uh, people looked at me. My, uh, some time ago, uh, there was a friend of mine went back to another Amish Mennonite community and they met somebody that knew my wife and I. And so that guy, had, that guy said to my friend, well, you know, and he, my wife, his name is Leah, and, and he said, well, you know, Leah married beneath her, uh, her level. Meaning, I definitely married up, which I agree with. But on the other hand, he didn't mean it complimentary. My friend said, well, I think we consider Marvin as being very successful where he's been. God can take somebody that people write off and make somebody out of them. He'll, now listen to me. When I went from being a, a, somebody that was raised Amish and God raised me up to work at Ramah and to work as they come in and be the assistant dean. You know what my friends did, Pastor? They said, how did you do that? And I'm happy they asked. It gave me a chance to t let them know that it was the Holy Spirit that made a way because I believe God. Everybody say, I believe God. When you believe God, the Holy Spirit begins to move into action. He'll do things for you. I said, He'll do things for you. I said, He'll do things for you. Absolutely. I like to say it this way, like I do my wife. Sometimes I look at my wife and I say, Now, now God would just as soon do something for us as He would anybody else. Absolutely. Because sometimes we get in our mind this idea that God will do something for the preacher up there. God will do something for so-and-so because he's a really spiritual. But little old me, I'll just have to get along best I can. We don't say it that way, but sometimes that's the way we think. You know what I'm saying? I want you to know God would just as soon do something for you as he would anybody else. You take the most famous preacher in the world, whoever you think that is, and I'm going to tell you something. Listen to me. God would just as soon do something for you as he would that, that preacher. Absolutely true. Isn't that true? That's true. God is no respecter of persons. So the Holy Spirit has been sent by God Ever since Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, ever since the day of Pentecost, we read that he came and he hasn't left. And every person who becomes born again has the Spirit of God living on the inside of them. Living on the inside. Right here. Right here. Down in your heart. He's right there. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Listen to me. Sometimes we act like he came, but he forgot to bring, in, bring what he had with him. You ever think about that? Well, I don't know if God can do anything. I mean, this is a tough situation. I don't, you know, I've told, I, how many of you ever told God, I don't know if you can do this? Well, I have. I told the Lord one time, I said, I don't think even you can get me where I need to be. I said, I said, I guess I know you can, but it sure doesn't seem like it to me. And I want you to know, listen to me, when, when you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit took out that sinful heart and he put a heart of righteousness in you that is perfect in God's sight, so perfect, listen to this, that the Holy Spirit said, that is the best place for me, I want to... Be right there. Right there. I'm going to take up residence in your heart. It is the best place for me. And he said, I'm not leaving. I'm, this is, I'm happy here. 
You ever been? You ever? You, how, how many of you got your favorite chair at the house? I'm happy there. You got your happy spot. You know what I'm talking about? And and you know when company comes over, you say, sit anywhere you want to, but you don't mean it because you want them to sit in your spot and you hope they'll sit somewhere else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I want you to know something. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. He stays there. So Jesus said, He will abide with you forever. Well, Sometimes we don't talk like that. So what does it mean? Well, another translation says, He will dwell continually with you forever. Dwell continually with you forever. Another translation says, He will remain constantly with you. Constantly. Now listen to me. You can't drive Him off. You might get ugly as anybody's ever seen. You maybe get as carnal as you ever saw. You may have day, you may have a day when you're glad the rest of the church people aren't around to see you because of the way you acted. But the Holy Spirit is always there. He's always there. He never gives up on you. People give up. They say, one, two, three strikes, you're out. The Holy Spirit says, keep swinging. Isn't that something? Listen to me. You need to know that the Holy Spirit is real. He is here in this place. Everybody say, here. In this place. In my life. Amen. It's right here. You've got to build that consciousness in you. You've got to tell yourself, I might not feel like it, may not seem like it, but the Bible said the Holy Spirit is with me at all times, so I know He must be. He must be. Isn't that right? And He didn't come empty-handed. He came with everything that He has. He came with His wisdom. He came with His power. He came with His knowledge. He came with His uh, resources. He came with everything He had. He brought everything with him. He didn't just say, get in a hurry, and all of a sudden heard you say, Jesus is my Lord. And said, oh, man, I, he said that quicker than I thought he was going to. i got to get there quick. And, and, and didn't take time to bring uh, what he had. He's not like us. He's the best planner in the world. He's, he's right on time. He helps us. So I want you to know, know that. I want you to know that. Why is he here? Well, he's here. Listen to me. He is not just far away. He's not just nearby, but right here. When you start realizing on a daily basis, when you're going to work, when you're driving your car, when you're sitting at home, when you're eating, uh, uh, when you're sleeping, then you just begin to realize he's always here. You'll find that life begins to be different. When you're in school, uh, when you're facing a test, it doesn't matter. He's right there with you. And if you'll believe God, He'll help you with things. He'll help you with things. How many of you, how many of you believe that God, the Holy Spirit, knows every answer you need? He knows that, doesn't He? I said He knows that, doesn't He? Absolutely. So, so here's the thing then it really isn't, the, the, when I have a problem, it is not, it's not because he has a problem. It's because I am not listening. I'm not conscious. I'm trying to do something on my own, and that's why I don't get the answer I need. I need to learn to get quiet. I need to learn to believe that God is, has sent me the Holy Spirit to help me and I believe that I can hear His voice. I can hear His voice. I believe I can. Isn't that right? And so, so get this down in you. He's here. Everybody say, He's here. He's not somewhere else uh, only. He's not just far away. But He's here. Right where you are. Wherever you are. 
No matter where you go, no matter what you do, He's always with you. He said, well, what if I just turn my back and walk away from the church? He'll go with you. I said, He'll go with you. Now, now listen to me. He'll go with you. He may not like where you take Him. He may not like what you do. He may not like what you say. But why does He go with you? Because He's not giving up on you. The psalmist said, if I go to the gates of hell, He will be there. Wow. He never gives up on us. Isn't that right? So listen to me. In your worst moment that you've ever had, and you wonder secretly to yourself, I wonder if God is going is, is to give up on me. Maybe He's going to turn His back on me. That right there, that thought right there is a thought of the devil. The devil comes to torment people and tell them, well, now, you know, God didn't like what you did, so, so he's leaving. He's giving up on you. You're just too far out there. No, my friend, listen to me. God's arm is not so short that he cannot bring salvation, is what Isaiah said. And so you've got to realize then that, that the Holy Spirit is here. You just mark it down. I had a guy, went to church all his life. Went to church all his life. And he would pray at the dinner table, Lord, we pray that you would be with us. And I had an opportunity to speak in his life because he was, he, I had a relationship with him. So I said to him one, uh, one time after he prayed that way, I said, you know, that's a useless prayer. He said, looked at me and I, he said, what do you mean? I said, you don't have to ask God to be with you. He is. If you're born again, he is. You know? He said, what do you mean? I said, uh, he said, I've heard people pray that all, all my life. I said, well, maybe you have, but the Bible says he's here. He is with you. You don't have to ask him to do that. He's already said he is. And if you're born again, he is. It's right there where you are. He said, I never heard anything like that. I said, here's another thought. I said, I said, when you become born again, you become connected with God. That's amazing, isn't it? You get connected with God, and and you and God are joined together. And and I said, I said, He has promised in many places, He will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I will be with you to the end of the age. Friend, I'm telling you, I meet people all the time. Their biggest problem is they don't they don't realize God's right here. One of the biggest problems right here. Yeah, it sounds so simple until you hit a problem and then you forget about God and you're trying to figure out what to do. You say, no, 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 my friend. That's a good time to remember God. Oh, well, I might not know, but God knows. He's right here. And so, God, I'm turning you loose on this problem and he will begin to work in you and in your life to bring you to that place of receiving from him amen and so so the disciples went away from there knowing that that Jesus might be leaving but the Holy Spirit is coming and he's going to be like Jesus same thing except you just can't see him isn't that right? Because he doesn't have a physical body. The Holy Spirit doesn't. So now let's jump over with me to John chapter 16 and verse 7. John 16, 7. John 16, 7. And, and, uh, and he says here, he says here, while you're finding that, I want you to, I want you to hear this while you're finding that. John 16, 7. A.B. Simpson said this. Now you just listen to this. You got your ears on? You know what, you know what I mean by that? Are you, are you listening? He said the Holy Spirit is the very element of our new existence as born-again Christians. Isn't that right? He said He is before us, behind us, above us, beneath us, within us, beyond us. We are buried in Him, lost in Him, encompassed by him as by the air that we breathe. We're surrounded by him at all times. 
that amazing? I'm just telling you, you just think about that. When you go shopping, he's right there. He's a deal finder. Isn't that right? He can make, he can make you, he can find you things that'll help your money, that 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 your money can uh, that'll fit within the money that you have. I got so much money, Lord. You either have to bring me more money, or bring me the things and make it available at the price I, I with at the level or the amount of money that I got. He is a deal maker. It's a deal finder, isn't he? It's always with you. Now the second thing I want you to the first thing is he's here. Isn't that right? This, Jesus said this in John sixteen seven, nevertheless I'll tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you, but if I depart, I will send him to you. Now listen, another translation says that Jesus said, It is best for you that I go away. Another translation says, it is, it's better for you that I leave. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Jesus is leaving. He's the best thing they ever had. And he says it's going to be better. Better. Everybody say better. better. He's here and it's better. Here and he's better. Sounds almost blasphemous, doesn't it? That that to say that that to, to have the Holy Spirit living in our hearts and being with us constantly wherever we are is better than having Jesus walking on this earth. You know why? How many of you, if you went to see Jesus, if he was here in person somewhere as a man like he was in Bible days, how many of you know there may be a chance to, to see him? There may not be. Depends on how many people are there. And if you need if you need something from him, um, if you need healing in your body, well, you might get to him. You might not. It depends on how long the day is, how many people he's got to pray for. He can only do so many. But listen to me. The same healer that worked through Jesus is the same healer that lives in you the healer is here the holy spirit is here the healer is here i said the healer is here you understand what i mean you don't have to fight you don't have to fuss you don't have to push anybody out of the way you don't have to rush to get ahead of anybody he is here able to minister to each one of us right now Matter of fact, right now, I'm just sensing the healing power flowing. It's right here. If you need healing in your body, just raise your hand right now. Just raise your hand right now. Raise your hand and just, just say, I receive my healing right now. Healing in my body. Healing in my body. In the name of Jesus. I tell you, it's flowing. I can tell you, it's flowing. I said, it is flowing. Hallelujah. Healing powers flowing. You say, well, Brother Yoda, you didn't, you're not laying hands on anybody. <laughs> Listen to me. There's one closer to you than my hand. Holy Spirit, who lives in you. He's helping you. He's the one. Right where you're at. You can say, I believe I receive. I believe I receive. Right now. Right now. And if you'll believe and receive and say, I uh, just just say, I take hold of what the Holy Spirit's giving me. I believe you can receive right where you are. Healing power's working in you. Healing power's working in you. Healing power's working in all of us right now. We just receive it right now, Holy Spirit. You're doing that right now in the name of Jesus. i tell you the truth about it. Now listen, I don't know who this is, but I, the Lord, I, I, and, and honestly, I assume it's here because I'm here because I'm here and got ready to minister this morning. I was getting ready. And the Lord began to talk to me about somebody with a foot problem. A foot problem. Anybody been dealing with that? That you? You just stand up right now if you would. And you just begin to, you just put your, put your weight on that foot right now. And you begin to take, check it out. The healing power has been flowing right now. And you begin to see 
that the Lord is working in your body right now in the name of Jesus. Healing power flowing in you. Healing power flowing in you. Man, healing power is flowing in you. Just lift a hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. It's just that simple, folks. Healing power flowing in you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, man, was it hurting when you was it hurting me when you came here? That's it. Mm-hmm. Healing powers flowing in your body. Did they tell you it wasn't healing? Um, I are they working on it? Aha. Uh-huh. But you watch. Ha uh-huh. ha. You watch. Healing power's working on you now. Healing power's working on you now. I said healing power's working on you now. He's taking care of that for you. The Lord wouldn't show it to me uh, if he didn't want to do something about it. Isn't that the true? You begin to walk up and down. Just just walk up and down there just a little bit. Just walk back and forth if you would a little bit. Yeah, just you. Yeah, just go ahead and walk with her. Walk with her, ma'am. Just go ahead and walk with her. Just begin to walk with her. And just begin to thank God for that right now in the name, in the name of Jesus. Healing power flowing. He is here to make things better for you. Isn't that something? He's here to make things better for you. When you wake up in the morning, you can think to yourself, today, he'll make things better for me. I said, isn't that something? Oh, glory to God. You may be facing problems at work, but you may stop and think to yourself, Holy Spirit, you're here to make this better. Isn't that something? I said, you're going to make something better. Somebody said, well, it don't look like much, but God said He's going to make it better. I said, He'll make it better. (laughs) Everybody say better. Say it like you mean it. Better. (laughs) Glory to God. It doesn't matter what the, what, 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 ever. It doesn't matter all the people that say it can't be. The Holy Spirit says it can be better. Jesus said it'll be better. Isn't that something? It's actually even better. It's even better that the Holy Spirit's here now to do to make it better. He's working on it. He's working on it. I said he's working on it. Glory to God. If you learn, if you would learn to walk in the consciousness of the Holy Spirit living in you, Brother Hagin said it this way. He said, we need to be more conscious of the greater one on the inside. I'm telling you, he'll help you solve problems. Now listen to this. I can tell you who this is for. But I'm not going to call you out and you just receive it. But God's going to help you solve some problems that other people can't. He'll give you the wisdom like Daniel had. and help you to walk in, in, in solve problems and, and, and other people are going to start asking you, how in the world did you do that? How did you know that? And you'll have an opportunity right there. You'll be at a crossroads to say, well, I don't know if I want to offend them or not, but listen to me. If you'll tell them that there is a God in heaven who shows me things, things you'll find out that your favor will increase and that your reach, your scope of influence will cr- increase and you'll find that even it will translate into a greater how's that Lord it'll cause more money I'll say it this way real simple more money will come to you so you receive that yep 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 praise you God praise you God it's going to make things better you watch it, sir. God's going to make some things better for you. Absolutely right. He wants you to know that you're the apple of his eye. He's got his eye on you. He likes you. You need to know that. He likes you. 
You know, sometimes we say it this way. How many of you have ever met somebody and you said, well, I know the Lord told us we need to love them. Isn't that right? But that don't mean I have to like them. <laughs> but it's interesting. Jesus loved everybody. He didn't always like everybody. I just want you to know, sir, he likes you. He likes to be around you because you got your heart headed, your heart's in the right place. Okay? Yeah, so, so you find out he's going to make some things better for you. He likes you. You, just, you understand that. Let's just thank God for it. God is good, isn't he? I said God is a good God, isn't he? I said he'll make things better. Now, now here's something I want you to get. What does the word better mean? I know this is simple, but sometimes in our English language we, th- we think of the word better and we just use it like the word nice. You know? Everything's nice. This is nice. That is nice. This is better. That's better. Well, what does that mean? Well, here's some words that we can use that will describe better. Listen to these words. Greater. Stronger. More. More. Advantageous, more excellent, finer, higher quality, surpassing, preferred, transcendent, outdo, enhanced, improved, upgraded, enriched, perfected. One co- one co- one one co- uh, person commented. On a source that I read that, and I love this. He said, "To be bet, to, for something to be better would be for would be to refer to it. This is more like it. This is how I like it. Okay. So, so, so it's like this. You got nice chairs to sit here today, but what if, what if you had to sit in those chairs to watch your football game?" What if you had what if what if your best chair was the chair you're sitting in right now? And they're good chairs. We thank God for them. I grew up, we had benches with no uh, hard benches with no pads on them and no backs. And we sat there for three hours. How would you like to try that? And 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 and, and so so here's the thing. But how many of you know that when you go home from here, you're gonna sit down in your favorite chair, your favorite spot, you're going to lean back and then you're going to think, this is more like it. This is better. That's what the Holy Spirit came to do, is to make it better for you. More like it. More like you like it. Isn't that right? And so you need to understand that that He's working on it and make it just right. Just right, the way you like it, the way you like it. The last thing I want to share with you is this. The Holy Spirit is, of course, here. We said that. He's making things better, isn't he? But I find out there's a lot of people waiting for God to move and do something. Well, when God gets ready, he'll move. I want you to know something. The Holy Spirit is moving. Jesus said, John chapter 3, verse 8, He said He is like the wind in that He comes. You can't tell where He came from or where He's going. But here's the implication. You can tell that He's here. Reinhard Bonnke said that He is the ever active, restless one. He is like the wind. And He said He is invisible and he is moving. And he said, he said, he went on to say that that is required for them to exist. There's no such thing as the Holy Spirit here and not moving. He said, well, Brother Yoda, but what about these people that aren't paying any attention to him? Well, he's moving to try to get their attention. Absolutely. He's trying to get their attention. 
Here's, here's what I know. Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to, we're going to quickly and then we'll, we'll wrap this up. Listen to this. Genesis chapter 1. Remember that? In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now verse 2. And the earth was without form and void and darkness on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. He was hovering. What did he do? What was he doing? One translation says he was brooding like a mother hen. What is he doing? The Holy Spirit is hovering. He's 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 like um, he's like he's like something over something. Um, and 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 so what happened? Was he just sitting there doing nothing? No, he's on ready. Now here's the thing: you got to get this. The moment God said, "Let there be light," verse three says, "and light." came. What does that mean? It means the moment that the Holy Spirit heard words, heard God speak, He began to move. He performed what God said. When God said, let there be light, the Holy Spirit made light. Just like that. He didn't say, well, I'll think about it. He didn't say, well, a thousand years is of the day. And a year is a thousand days, and so it'll be a while. You know what I'm saying? We've got to get rid of that after a while mentality and realize that God's wanting to move now. He's moving in here. He's hovering on every one of you. He's listening to your words. When you speak words that line up with the Bible, He moves to perform those words. If you say, I believe I have received healing, you know, which lines up with what the Bible says. Listen to me. He's working in your body to bring healing. When he, when, when he says, when, when, when you begin to say, I believe God will supply all my needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus, Philippians 4.19, did you know the Holy Spirit begins to move in that direction for you? He brings things to your past for you that you would not have no possible way in the natural to get. He's working on it. He said, how come some things take a while though? Brother Yoda, I know that not everything happens instantly. Well, it's because, it's, listen to this, it's because not only does he have to work in your life to bring that request, but he also has to work in other people. You say, well, I don't want another job. Well, uh, the Holy Spirit immediately begins to work on that. But he has to get a, find a place for you. He has to find a company that's willing to hire you. He has to find a company that has an opening. And he has to connect you and that company. Sometimes it takes time. And then sometimes people don't listen so good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they don't, they aren't, they aren't, they, they, you know, I, I've talked about it. I've heard this time and again. I ask like, Lord, I need this amount of money. Well, uh, um, Finally, I've had people come to me and say, well, I, I, you know, here, here it is. The Lord told me three weeks ago. And, I, you know, I, I, I just didn't get around to it. I just, uh, I didn't, I, 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 you know, I just didn't, didn't know if it was the Lord or not. Well, listen to me, my friend. Sometimes it just takes a while. I appreciate people making time, taking time to make sure it's the Lord. Isn't that right? And so, so you understand things take a while because God has to work on more people than just yourself in order to uh, bring about every request that you might have. But he is moving. He is moving. Listen, listen to what, uh, listen to what uh, A.B. Simpson said uh, to, uh, about that. He said, We must trust the Holy Spirit and expect Him to respond to our need implicitly as we expect the air to enter our lungs, the opening of our lungs, and the sunrise to meet us in the morning. Now, none of you, I know this, none of you stayed up all night wondering if the sun's coming up. Not one of us. If you like me, you slept well. And you didn't worry about it, did you? You knew it was coming. Like one guy said, it's been doing that for years. And so... So, so here's the thing. You don't sit there and not breathe and you say, well, I don't know if I breathe if there's going to be any air there. You didn't do that, did you? No, you just breathe without thinking, isn't it? Isn't that right? 
So we don't worry about the sunrise coming and we don't worry about the air that we breathe. In the same way, my friend, put your trust in the Holy Spirit. Don't worry about the Him whether He's going to do something for you or not. He is. He's more dependable than the sun coming up in the east. He's more dependable than the air you breathe. Isn't that amazing? Subrigrisi alamande e subrande tu. Ivristo kamatasi ataka hapike eti sende mondi so put your trust in him and learn to depend on him and rely upon him on every hand and you'll find that life will take you a journey that you didn't intend and you wonder where in the world am I going but when you follow him and depend on him he'll make life better for you and cause you to rise up even beyond that which others have said and they'll be shown that they did not know uh, everything that God had for you. But as you follow him, you'll find out everything that God himself has for you. And you'll find that his plans are wonderful and it'll be great joy to your life. Let's just lift our hands up and thank God for it. We praise you for it now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for that right now. Hallelujah. We thank you for it right now, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just sense this. Somebody's going to school. I don't know who it is. Somebody's going to school, and God is going to cause you to excel. If you'll depend on Him, put your trust in Him, and say, Holy Spirit, help me, He'll cause you to excel. I said, He'll cause you to excel. I said, He'll cause you to excel. He'll cause you to, he'll cause you to, 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 to do better than you ever thought you would. So put your trust in Him, and He will help you to rise up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we just thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know? Now listen to this. There's only three things I want you to remember out of, every, out of everything I said. Say it with me. He's here. He's better. And He's moving. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I believe I can re remember three things. I can remember those three things. He's here. Say it with me. He's here. He's better. And He's moving. He is. That's what He's doing. Hallelujah. Right where we are. Thank you, Jesus. Let's thank Him right now one more time. Thank you, Father. Bless you, Lord. Bless these people. Move mightily in their life. Hallelujah. 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 Bless these people so that you're working on their behalf even right now in the name of Jesus. You're making a way for them. You're smoothing the way for them. You're making room for them. And when they get to the place that you're working on, you'll, they'll find out that you've already been there and you've made a place for them. You've made a position for them. And you caused them to have room to operate. And given them, you made room for them and all the blessings that you want to put on their life. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Thank you for that right now. Stand if you would, please.